Aloha, people. Merry Christmas, Adrian. Aloha, Claude. Merry Christmas. How was, how was your Christmas? Let us know. Oh, <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Spending time with family is the most beautiful time of the year. For me, I'm, I'm a family a man. I'm a family person. I always love spending time with friends and family and friends that they became family <laughs> afterwards, obviously. And uh, yeah, with some of them, I spend a um, close time you know in real life with, with you for example i spend <laughs> some time uh, on the on the camera but it's nice it's always good to wish good things to people how was your christmas by the way oh it was unbelievable like unreal you know it's, it's one of those christmases that you know never happened in life you know so <laughs> spent it with family it was it was really nice it was uh, it was good to be home after a few a few years away uh, being back in in my country with my family, you know, it's something uh, you can't put a price on that. So thank you, oh. and uh, I wish that we wish that everybody's Christmas was amazing. Thank you once again, guys, for watching us today. It's our fifth episode. Uh, we yeah, had some you. real fun episodes and interesting episodes in the past. If you yeah. if you'd like to check them out, they are here in the channel. Uh, you feel free to subscribe and follow us because you know like we're receiving a lot of nice ideas and nice comments which is really really nice of you so uh, we Thank do you. hope you enjoy them and keep enjoying them uh, in the future now for today yeah. between christmas and new year's eve uh, come on adrian give us your fun fact uh, the, the the fun fact that we have for today uh, it has and it doesn't uh, connection with uh, our topic for today um, in a way or another, I will uh, want you to to guess if at least the country, not obviously the city is going to be hard, but at least guess the country where you find the most, uh, the oldest, sorry, the oldest uh, hotel in the world, if you have any idea, and how old it is. I'm going to go with UK. Not even close, but okay. <laughs> not even close. No, that's not that's not okay. Uh, it's in uh, Japan, if you uh, if you can believe that. Yes, uh, the name is Nih Nishiyama. And I sorry for all the Japanese that are watching. <laughs> if I'm saying anything wrong, yeah. Onsen Ken you Ken you can uh, is a hot spring hotel situated in Hayakawa. Yamashi, Yamanashi, uh, Japan. Yeah, it has um, nearly 13,000 years. Wow. Can you imagine that? And it's uh, been no, in the same family. It's been the same family for more than 52 generations, of course, with uh, adopted sons as well because you know maybe some of them didn't have <laughs> kids or, or daughters or anything. It's understandable. And it's been a four-star hotel for a very, very long time, I think, since the opening, as, long, as far as I see here. So to stay four-star hotel for 52 generations, wow, wow, that's amazing. I can I can't yeah. even imagine how hotels were back in uh, I don't know whatever year that was. Yeah, you know, yeah, like it would have been yeah. a, a different world. So. Uh, wow. Clap, clap to and them. It is, <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, yeah, it, is in, it is in Guinness Book World uh, of Records. Yeah, you must cannot be. imagine. It's like, it, it must be, yeah. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Wow. The, the history and uh, how can I say it? The, the stories that that hotel... Um, if those walls inside. could talk, you know, like... Uh, as we always oh, wow, <laughs> wow. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That's amazing. Yeah. Beautiful. Bring um, us to the topic. Bring us to the topic of today. Oh, yeah, <laughs> are you so excited yeah. to talk about it? Yeah, so I'm first... excited to, to find out new things, to find out new things, because that's a topic that uh, definitely myself and uh, the viewers, they can find uh, out some new things, amazing things. We'll, we'll, do, we'll do one thing. Before talking yeah. about the to today's topic, uh, I'll give you one minute to talk about today's special guest. So tell us wow. who, you know, something about our special guest. Oh, I would say some good things first, and um, <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything at the end bad about this person because <laughs> he is an amazing person, very joyful, and very funny. I like his sarcasm. I <laughs> love his sarcasm. He's a nice, warm uh, person. We've worked together. You worked uh, 
with uh, with him as well. I work with him as well. Um, it's a pleasure to meet him. It's from Hungary. Uh, he's been away in Sweden. Now he's in Hungary. He's dying to meet us. He's dying to be in our podcast. So <laughs> everybody meet Jolt. And I would like Jolt to, to speak a little bit more uh, about himself. Here he goes. So let's count down. Five, four, three, two, one. one. Uh, as we said, we both Jolt worked with here. this wonderful guy. Hi, Jolt. Yes. Good Hi, evening. Jolt. Hello, guys. Evening. Welcome. How are you doing today? How was your Christmas? Uh, tell us a little bit about your Christmas. Thank you. Thanks for having me, first of all. It was nice. I'm with family. I'm in Hungary now. So spending some quality, quality time, eating and drinking all day and trying this to... This is straight as... away with the jokes and straight away the sarcasm. I love this guy. <laughs> I told you that I love this guy. <laughs> it's true. So that's true. That's what Christmas is about. Eating and drinking yeah. without having any problem with it. Yeah. You know, work, end of the year, everyone is happy, but we'll try to be happy and waiting yeah. for the next year, for the next opportunities. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's been an uh, incredibly tough year for everybody for reasons that we're all aware, so we're not going to talk about that. And <laughs> we, we definitely want to believe past. that <laughs> next year, exactly, it's, it's going to be... Hopefully next year is going to be nice. Wonderful. So exactly. don't worry, guys. <laughs> Hospitality going to come back and we're going to smash it. Definitely. So about this, then uh, we'll uh, um, I'll introduce today's topic, which is uh, sustainability. And sustainability in uh, in tourism, in hospitality, is something uh, extremely important that I, I'm sure a lot of people underestimate. They don't give it a, lot, a lot of importance because from 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 it, uh, everything uh, everything else could stem and could improve uh, uh, hospitality itself. Uh, as we'll talk about it later on, of course, you know, during uh, during the, the questions and answers with Jolt. Uh, but like just me, agent said it itself. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people do not know a lot about sustainability, which is nothing wrong with it. Uh, and that's why having you on the call with us today will be of uh, great help for for a lot of people for everyone possibly because uh, I'll just you know talk us a, a little bit about yourself uh, your your studies uh, yeah. which tie in of course greatly with the topic yeah absolutely so this topic is is not just on industry as because now unfortunately uh, it's not just a small topic we read about uh, on the internet or it's on small forums uh, it's all taken care of by uh, lots of people now luckily uh, politician, lots of uh, government people. So it's a good thing. Uh, I also studied hospitality and hotel management, and I uh, and I wrote my thesis about uh, uh, environment and hospitality uh, sustainability. And uh, I love uh, natural history, natural science. I spend all my time outside in the nature, so that's why it's really close to me, and uh, I think it's really important. And uh, that's why ever since I uh, finished uh, university. In my workplaces, in the in the hotels, I try to follow up uh, with the management and with all the other people this plan and uh, all the other things uh, we do uh, in uh, in sustain sustainability related in uh, in the hotels. Uh, so yes, it's really important. And as you said, Claudio, it's uh, it's also in uh, in hospitality. So it's not just uh, politicians and governments can do things, but also us. Uh, small people can do a lots of things, and uh, traveling, traveling, and uh, and this industry is really important, uh, saving the planet. Uh, so yes, Adrian, do you want to ask him, Jolt, anything in particular? Uh, it's 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 amazing um, how how he talks about uh, saving the planet. You know, it's interesting because it comes uh, first from within yourself that's the most important thing i like how he said that he is trying to save the planet and more people they would have this attitude of course not only in your workplace but in your day-to-day -day life because like he said uh, like Joel said it's not only oh the government has an uh, a thing to do they have a formula and efficient formula to save the planet no it comes from uh, your day-to-day -day, um, environment, from your day-to-day -day routine to save and to uh, sustain a little bit, to, to, to have not that consumerism that it is in the world. And in hospitality, 
I'm sure he has some interesting things. And I want Joel, it brings me to my first question, to tell us a little bit if, because now, now it's a very fresh word. Let's say sustainability sounds very new, very modern, uh, but I, I, I'm guessing sustainability uh, was in the world since, you know, 13,000 years ago, since the first hotel. But maybe we didn't see it. Uh, maybe um, they had a different routine when they said to the guest, go and sleep because we're going to close the, I don't know, the candles. Let's, for, let's give an example of that so they can save the candles. I'm, I'm, I'm talking now like 400 years ago before Tesla yeah, yeah. came with the, or, uh, or uh, Graham Bell came with the, you know, Thomas Edison, sorry, with the light bulb. But that's what I want to say. Tell us a little bit about this historical part because it's interesting how it evolves in a different world every day, but at the same time, it stays there. Yeah, absolutely. All, all this uh, sustainability thing is here with us for a long time, but unfortunately, over the past 60 or 80 years, it's been much more uh, important and interesting in our lives because we can actually see and feel uh, all the results and everything. We go outside and, and see every small things. And uh, hospitality has been always uh, one of the biggest and most important uh, Thing in uh, in uh, the industrial life, so we also have to take care of uh, the hospitality, including uh, the sustainability. So, unfortunately, uh, after the fifty in the fifties, sixties has been started to uh, ha has been really important talks and topics uh, in the political life, and they actually did uh, really good uh, investments and things uh, regarding the sustainability. But uh, at the moment, I just want to talk about because politician, it's I, I mean, it's a it's a big topic. I'm not I don't want to uh, include or go inside yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. Politi political things. I want to talk about the things we can actually do, uh, the small, small people, yeah, the, yeah. the small personal things we can do actually with uh, with our travels and uh, in the everyday Perfect. life. Um, so you guys, I, I've been watching the previous episodes. You've been always uh, seeing the differences between uh, big hotel chains, big hotels, and also small businesses. And uh, this is also a topic uh, which is really uh, divided into these two businesses. I mean, uh, there are lots of things a big hotel chain can do and can't do. And also there are lots of things that the small businesses, let's say a small BNB or a, a few, few hotel rooms on uh, business can do and can't do. And uh, there are lots of good things. So, and I I'm, I'm going to say about uh, hotels, especially because uh, that's I'm I'm really interested. But uh, I also want to spread out the the topics to other things. But uh, in a hotel, there are lots of uh, departments and uh, lots of people working in the same time in the hotel, and lots of people can actually do uh, very good things. But as you said, Claudio, it's uh, it's really small thing. So we actually don't even think about that is is uh, is possible, and uh, and uh, we can actually do some small things like this. Uh, for example, reception. I think reception and and uh, that's also part of the the administrative part. Uh, it's one of the easiest thing is the saving paper. Uh, we still print out unnecessary amount of papers every single day. Lots of reports, which would be easily just saved to a, a pen drive or to the computer, and we don't even need to uh, to print out. But it's in our habit, in our life, that we sit down in the morning, we print out all the reports, which is absolutely unnecessary. We still can use uh, a PPT slide or just save it to a computer and use it as it is, and. Uh, that's also one of the most important that do not print out so many papers because it's just unnecessary. And also uh, the invoices, for example, in the morning, if we, if we print out the invoices for the guests, uh, we can easily just ask if they actually just want to receive it, a PDF profile in the morning, because most of the people don't even check it. So the, the invoice coming out in, in two copies, absolutely unnecessary. Uh, the hotel itself don't even use it. I mean, we do use it, but we can easily uh, just have a look on the on the internet because it's all all uh, computerized. So uh, also, 
people in the offices, in the back office, it's really uh, easy to save so many, so much paper because it's just absolutely not necessary to print out. Uh, the tough one, I would say, is the FMB part and the, and the kitchen, uh, and also housekeeping, uh, because unfortunately they they have to uh, waste a lot of uh, thing. Uh, food on FMB and uh, kitchen side or drink and also lots of uh, small uh, things in housekeeping uh, because we so this is the thing in in hotel hotel thing unfortunately even if you want to uh, save the the word and uh, and uh, do sustainable things you can't actually do because it's a hotel so there are certain things we need to follow the rules uh, we need to do lots of things for the guests and uh, there are actually just, you know, you can't do certain things, for example, uh, even, if you, even if, you, if you open or if the guest opens uh, a soap bar or a body lotion, unfortunately, you can't put it back as a half used soap. Uh, but there are certain things we can actually do with this. So don't just waste, for example, the soap uh, and just throw it away or don't, uh, don't, uh, waste all the food we, we're not gonna use anymore the food the drinks uh, there are we can actually use them later and uh, there are lots of useful things so well, one thing very, uh, oh yeah perfect please Klaus, <laughs> please by, by me no yeah, because I, I wanted to add <laughs> something my, my i wanted to add something yeah. because um because i remember that in the hotel where we work together we used to have a meeting like once a month just you know gathering a few people from each department to talk about improvements that we could do for the customer service for the team member satisfaction and including the um, sustainability. So that was one of the topics. And I remember specifically one time you came along because of course I asked you like be a part of it because with your studies, with your knowledge, you could really be a plus you know, for, this, for the meeting, but for the hotel. And so, as you said, you know, in terms of the, the soap, you know, like the, right now, a lot of uh, places uh, uh, install dispensers. So you just top up the dispenser. You don't waste anything because it's not like just a one time uh, use, you know. So that's just one, one example. But I just wanted to ask you, uh, what do you think, like, if there is one thing that is wrong uh, with the, it's the approach, the approach to sustainability is wrong because uh, we, as you mentioned, again, big international corporations, you know, like th there is the idea, it's out there, you know, and it's easy to say, yeah, we're doing everything we can, but we, we all know that it's not true. This is not happening. So we want to say, yeah, okay, you're saying you're, you're doing everything that you can, but uh, the reality says that in the end, when it, when it cascades to all the team members, uh, to the, like, to the bottom, uh, the the idea the concept does not get there it doesn't arrive at all so uh, i just wanted to ask you how how frustrated you got playing a small part in saving the world because saving the world is a big big sentence but we we can all we can actually do something you know each and every one of you so what was your level of frustration in general you know in your experience in life in all the hotels you've been when you saw that that was not happening at all or almost at all yeah, absolutely. It's really frustrating to, to see that even these small and cheap and free things, which could uh, give us much more year on Earth and save our life in total, uh, is not actually happening. And lots of people don't care at all. And uh, it's easy to do at the moment, but later in the future, when we're going to be there and see how we actually destroyed our uh, on planet is going to be frustration, frustrated for, for everyone. Uh, but as you said, it's not just one person and uh, it needs to be done as, as a group. Also, we need to include all the management in the hotel. Uh, sometimes we need to include also outside companies, outside people, because we can actually, uh, we can't actually do that on our own. Uh, for example, Let's, back, let's go back to housekeeping. Uh, as you said, there are automatic uh, dispensers for, for soap and, uh, and body lotion. We know that doesn't really look nice if you walk into a four or five star hotel, there is this big stupid plastic thing on a wall which gives you the soap. It's not that exclusive as you open the freshly uh, baked soap from the, from the paper, but still it saves us and 
if we still need to use these bars, for example, or if we use plastic bottles for body lotion or condition or shampoo, uh, unfortunately, all these things, half of them is going to be waste. And we can't put this back to the hotel rooms and we can't give this to the next hotel guest, unfortunately. But we still can collect all these things. And what we did in uh, Budapest, for example, housekeeping collected all these uh, use things in the hotel room and uh, we collected them and took it to, to the Red Cross and uh, all nice. the people in uh, need uh, could use these uh, use things because of course it's it's nothing bad or nothing wrong with it uh, so other people who are in need st still can use it and also the same thing with uh, uh, with food and FMB in the kitchen there are lots of uh, food and uh, FMB material, which is a leftover oh. and uh, which is left out. It's crazy amount. I know Adrian, you used to work. <laughs> yeah, loads, 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 like. uh, you know, and end of the day, when you finish the table and you collect all the, the leftover food and you see all these things are going to the bin. And uh, unfortunately, I also try to manage uh, a collection, for example, for these uh, uh, that's amazing yeah. uh, leftover food uh, but there are certain um, things you, you need to done with the food itself before you actually take it or give it to uh, for example homeless people or not even just homeless people for uh, for farms um, so yeah. if, if you if you work in in a bigger chain uh, as we said comparing the small business and the bigger business in these things, these things, for example, are really hard because you can't just take all the collected food and material uh, to the shelter and give it to give it to people because you know it has to be a certified food. You cannot just give uh, this food to uh, to an uncertain place. And this thing, for example, uh, for a smaller business, is much more easier if you are located in a small city. You know, you know all the, the local people. You all the, you know all the local companies. You know they are more than happy to take it, and uh, and uh, there are no needs for so much paper and administration, and uh, also these small uh, housekeeping stuff, the leftover housekeeping products are also much more easier to to give if you are on a small business because, uh, you know, they don't look after so many uh, paperwork and the administrative things. Uh, in Sweden, in my previous hotel, luckily we were able to take all the, the leftover food and the FMB material to uh, an industrial company which made uh, biodiesel uh, from the food from the food. So wow. it's also, also and all the all the buses and the public transport uh, uh, vehicles in the city uh, are using biodiesel. So it was good to see, you know, when you are walking on a street and you see a bus biodiesel on the side, you know that it's actually a leftover food, which I gave it to <laughs> the company from my previous lunch. Uh, but you know what I mean? So it's good to see uh, these small things, but it's not easy. And, but let, uh, me, let me interrupt you a little bit, uh, Joel, because I don't want to be the lawyer of the devil now. And then, you know, uh, go on the other side of the discussion with maybe some viewers or maybe some people that they have different opinions uh, than you. Uh, obviously, I support your opinion. Oh, God bless me. You are right. I've seen so much waste that in so much time that I cannot live with myself uh, uh, anymore. <laughs> but there would be always people who would think maybe because you mentioned housekeeping or as just in a small example yeah housekeeping department uh, or those small individual bo bottles yeah let's not make this uh, you know the, the 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 apple of uh, of fight now yeah if mm -hmm. that makes sense the reason of fight now but some people they will believe that it takes from, how can I say, from the privacy, they would, from fashion, from uh, personal, personalizing uh, your room, uh, your bathroom. Some people, they might, they might think, oh, I paid an extra uh, you know, dollar, an extra euro or an extra pound just to have this, um, how can I say, luxury taste here. Everything to be freshly open. Is that one of the things that we might change in the future? The mentality of obviously that's um, not our uh, 
reason here to you know create a fight or anything like that but how can we change this if it's possible or if we can change it somehow yeah absolutely i i agree with you uh these things in uh, in hotel business are still uh, a living thing um if, I, I understand if you go to a hotel uh, there is a certain luxury there is a certain thing you are expecting so you can't just put uh, wasted products i mean used products into the room you can't put uh, plastic bottles on the top for dispensary to use it uh, because it's it's a five-star hotel uh, i understand uh, even if you don't do this as a hotel as a company there are lots of small things we need to do uh, as a guest as a customer so these two things working uh, so the company also needs to do certain things but in the same time the individual itself uh, needs to do the guest needs to do also uh, some some uh, unluxury things uh, to protect our environment because it it goes together it works only together so as as you guys said it's not just one person but everyone thinks oh i'm not going to save the planet if if i if i you know waste this food but everyone thinks the same so at the end 100 people is going to be 200,000 people and so on and at the end uh, we are the persons we are the individuals who can who can do uh, who can do things so let's say if you go to a hotel room i know you paid a lot but you don't need to uh, fill up the bathtub with 200 liter water because you think yeah. oh you know it's paid so you know i understand you go to a hotel you want to you go go to a hotel room you want to live a luxurious life at least for one night but in the same time, you don't need to do unnecessary things. So you don't need to you don't need to go to the executive lounge and you know just pick up all the food because you know it's paid, it's free, and you don't need to go to the bathtub and fill up two hundred liters of water, and uh, you don't need twice. to maybe twice exactly maybe in twice, the morning yeah. and the evening. <laughs> and you exactly. don't need to you don't two need people. to turn on the lights all the time because you know it's paid and it's including a price. So. Uh, there are things we can do as a hotel, but also the individual persons as a guest has to uh, respect all these things and has to do these things. Uh, I don't think it's going to change, unfortunately, uh, in the future. So uh, as a hotel, we need to do our best and, uh, and uh, follow up these things. And... Uh, well, I read an article uh, lately that said that 67% of travelers uh, are conscious about sustainability in hotels nowadays. So it, the number is increasing. So be, people are, are actually paying attention. You know, if this uh, hotel is uh, uh, reducing waste or uh, saving water or, or anything, you know, energy. So um, I think that people are becoming more aware about the issue. Uh, in, I was in also country. doing a research when I was doing my thesis. I was also doing a research about uh, uh, the behavior of the guests as an individual when they book a hotel room, and uh, if they care about the the actual actions taken by the hotel if they book a hotel room, and uh, they do they do care and they don't care in the same time. If they look for a hotel, unfortunately, they only look after the price. That's the only thing. Uh, I mean, there are a certain amount of people who are not care about, doesn't care about the price, but most of us, I would say, do care yeah. about the price. And if it's a, it's a sustainability, environment friendly or not environment friendly hotel, you're going to go to the hotel, which is a reasonable price with good quality. But if they go to the hotel, ho hotel room and they are already there, they absolutely appreciate um, the environmental friendly things and they try to follow up and they try to do uh, on a daily basis. And uh, that's why it's important for a hotel uh, to, to make an attention and uh, leave out papers, leaflets in, in the lobby, um, in, the, in the hotel room, in the restaurant, everywhere, um, which brings the attention to the guest what they can actually do during the small days. You know, by now every single hotel uses these uh, uh, textile policy if you don't use your uh, towel if you don't want your towel changed don't leave it on the floor and uh, and these kind of things which i really liked for example in uh, in sweden just now 
uh, even in Sweden, by the way, uh, Sweden is all known by one of the you know first countries who is looking after the environment and they are really environment and friendly and mm -hmm. and they recycle basically everything and they try to do their best but still not all of the people are following this and still not easy uh, to do such things uh, i really liked that uh, for example they don't have a plastic bottle of water in a hotel room um, yeah. you know it's also plastic bottle you know you just open it you drink it and throw it away one plus one usage plastic which is unnecessary also uh, in sweden the tap water is absolutely safety and really drink drinkable so in the hotel room we placed outside papers saying the tap water is drinkable we do have plastic waters bottled waters you can drink it it's not in the room so it's only up on request uh, if you want to drink you can free free through to drink from the tap water because it's safe and uh, we didn't we don't we didn't really have actually requests for bottled water because you know if if they can drink it it's it's uh, it's much more better and also uh, good for the environment i remember finding a can of water like a can of coke but it was actually a can of water in the room you know in your hotel where i stayed and i, I actually yeah. asked you like is this a special kind of water or is it normal <laughs> and you say it's normal and another thing that i loved from your hotel and it's the only time i've seen it in my life was the laundry bags were paper laundry bags, not plastic laundry bags. And I want to repeat that it was the only hotel where I've seen it. So congratulations to, mm -hmm. to, to the, the, the Hilton in Stockholm because it was something amazing to do. That's also a, this, a one new... Is sorry, this, sorry to interrupt you guys. I just want to, I just want to ask something. Is, is this, uh, one, this thing can be now these days uh, interesting fashion... And that's, I, I want to call it interesting, fashionable uh, promotion. It can be now because you said the numbers are growing. 60 something percent of the people are more aware of uh, sustainability. It can be used as promoting your hotel. Guys, look, if you come to us, okay, you are gonna pay maybe you know, two euros more for the room, but then with this uh, leftovers, we're gonna do this biodiesel, feed anything you want or this and that you name it and it can be used or it's yeah, it absolutely. just gonna be made, made behind closed doors or people they cannot find about this yeah absolutely <laughs> uh, these are really good examples and we can we can share all these things uh with with the other companies uh but this is the thing uh, at the end of the day uh the hotels want to make money and these yeah. small things uh, are not really actually making any money, uh, which is not true because uh, if, they, if they collect the leftover, they can sell it to make uh, biodiesel. Uh, if they, so these are, for example, long-term um, investments uh, to change yeah. the light bulbs or, or uh, install place, uh, I don't know, uh, solar, uh, solar panels, yeah. solar panels yeah. on the top. Yeah, yeah, All yeah, these things know. are long, longer term investments. Uh, but at the end of the day, they're going to make or they're going to save some money. Absolutely. Uh, so that's the thing. Uh, lots of companies don't really want to follow it because uh, it, it is just, uh, it's not, doesn't add anything. It's making fast anything. money, yeah, yeah. Making fast exactly. the revenue, making fast money and middle budget. Yeah, this is true. Yeah, it's, thank it's you. Amazing. It's amazing. No, thank you. Thank you, Joel, for, for all this information because, again, some of it we already knew. The, yeah. the rest, possibly, we didn't know all, uh, again, coming from your studies back to the 50s and 60s, you know, in the last 80 yeah. years, uh, uh, that it's gotten worse and worse and people not being aware. So, I hope that everybody out there got a little bit more, uh, you know, in inspiration and information from, from the call today. I don't know if you guys want to add anything before we say goodbye. Anything else, Adrian or Jolt? I just want to say if Elon Musk or um, <laughs> Jeff Bezos, they see this uh, blog, please yeah, look after hotels, invest in sustainability and not only in Tesla. Yeah, please. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Please don't <laughs> wait. Think about don't it. Don't wait. Yeah. So I want to wish I'm everybody. Saying guy, I'm saying this to the to the guy who is uh, creating electrical cars. Yeah, <laughs> of course he thinks about. <laughs> Hopefully. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
So I want to wanna wish everybody a, a happy new year. And so we'll see you next year again with, year. Our, with our lovely new special guest. I, I want to thank Joel for being on the call today once again, because uh, you, it's a very, very delicate uh, topic. So thank you for sharing your, your knowledge and your information and your experience with us. Thank you, John. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Happy